All right, 10 minutes to the top of the hour of 8 o'clock this day. The very, very bright and, of course, a glorious one. It's time for the time now for the Kickstarter, and uh, we shall be talking about Rwanda. Rwanda held a general election yesterday, the 15th of uh, July, where the countrymen went to the polls to elect a president and also elect legislators who make up the assembly that is the parliament. Results from that particular general election have begun streaming in. For those that are following the parliamentary polls, no doubt the statistics will be available a little bit later, but we are concentrating on the presidential race that had two people challenging the incumbent, uh, Paul Kagame. We now do know that he has secured that vote by more than 97% of the vote. That is uh, significant. The last election also had numbers in the region of uh, 98 plus. It is something that shocks the political landscape, but statistically, I think if the election results are anything to go by, then it is possible. I'll be joined on set by very eminent uh, minds who will be helping us understand what this means for the region and for Rwanda in particular. But allow me just emphasize the fact that President uh, Paul Kagame, who came to power in 2000, has now been at the helm for 24 years and he has masterminded so to speak one of the most remarkable national recovery stories anywhere in the world especially in the state that Rwanda suffered a devastating genocide in 1994 that left everything completely in a wreck. The fact that Rwanda is where it is right now many are saying those who have been flocking his campaign rallies were not there to seek or to have him see through some of the promises but to simply say thank you. Well, is it so? We shall find out. I'm joined on set by uh, Dr. Tolita Lea Atia. He's uh, an analyst and uh, an observer of everything political, especially within the region. Many thanks for joining us, Doctor. Thank you. I'm also joined by Sarah Birete, Executive Director at the Center for Constitutional Governance and uh, one who immerses herself in uh, governance aspects, not only in Uganda, but also across the region. Many thanks for joining us. Thank you, Andy. The results are in. The statistics are not shocking, though they are shocking, if you understand what I'm saying. 98% <laughs> of the vote was pretty much the expected one. Sarah Bidete, what's your take on what's happening and how do we move forward as a region? The fact that continuity has now been assured. Well, I think many people who have been observing uh, democracy in, in Rwanda are not shocked by, by the results. The same result was, you know, got in uh, 2017. Mm -hmm. But on a range of things, you know, 9.7 million voters mm -hmm. took to the polls, both in Rwanda and the uh, diaspora. Yeah. I was impressed by the diaspora turnout, mm -hmm. many especially here in Uganda, and uh, especially given the fact that our electoral commission is still failing to organize, you know, elections for Ugandans in diaspora. I hope they are taking that lesson. At least that's a good lesson to pick from mm -hmm. the Rwanda elections. So you had the contest of three people. Mm -hmm all men after the ladies were disqualified in the three bad candidates Victoria Ingabire was disqualified and the Bernard Intaganda on the basis of previous conviction and then Diana Rigara failed to get the required en endorsements mm. to, to be on the ballot so this is what I would call the other opposition in Rwanda, for lack of a better word. But you had the, the two, Frankie Havineza and Philip Mpaimana, 
who are more or less like a controlled opposition. And uh, so far they've garnered 0.32% and 0.53% respectively. So <laughs> with, the, with the incumbent at 99%. Very shocking results. It is uh, clear evidence that there is no competition. There is no political mm. competition. <coughs> but what were the key issues in the elections? Just like any other country in the region, Rwanda uh, is experiencing. Sarah, yes? we will be going into the key issues of the election. Uh, first, let's uh, have the perspective, the uh, more like the canopy, especially with regard to how the news is being received across the region. If you don't mind, Doctor, yes. 98 plus, like I said, it's both a shocker and a no shocker, depending on what context you're trying to look at it. What I see is that continuity has been maintained for Rwanda, given the fact that uh, it is debatable that there's a lot that is going on. And maybe if there were any changes to happen diametrically, that would topple Paul Kagame, then again, Rwanda would be facing a totally a different uh, question and uh, a set of uh, challenges. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I think this is um, an interesting morning. <laughs> For Uganda? For the region. Mm. And I want to start from there. I must say, I haven't spoken to anybody in... Uh, Kinshasa, but I think this is not good news mm. in Kinshasa. Um, what is interesting about this is that when you follow the events towards and around and the momentum of the election in Rwanda, one thing that came out particularly from the news feeds, is that a lot of youth mm. came out to participate. Mm -hmm. And the dichotomy of the population at the moment is also that many majority of them that actually participated in this election are those that were born slightly after, after the genocide. The genocide. Mm. Now, this also sometimes causes a lot of contradiction in terms of uh, situating logic and mm. ideas mm -hmm. that we observers and analysts rely on. Mm. Because it would almost look as sure as night comes after the sun that uh, the global the global exterior that seems to have gripped the youth mm. not to try and even go into what is happening with the Gen Z uh, in the neighborhood would have been something would have seen in Rwanda mm. I must admit that I'm one of those who has been proven wrong. I kept baiting mm. within my feet that uh, at least some 15%, 11% of the vote was going to be taken off, mm. you know, from Kagame. If you look at it from a regression, if, you are if you're using a regression formula, then probably you begin to think more and more that the way elections are conducted in Rwanda has a lot to be told. I think we, not many people understand what is going inside Rwanda. Mm -hmm. And I think Rwanda is closed to a very large extent. It's a the, closed state. It's a closed state. Uh, however, this is not the first kind of state to get closed. Mm. China, I think, is the champion. Mm. Uh, and the attempts to get China out of its closet spans a long history of time. You remember right from the Opium War 
when the British and all these people wanted to try and open the eastern routes to trade with China. Okay. So for me, the real key thing is that how long mm. can this be maintained? All right. Now that there is continuity, maybe it's going to stay as is. But of course, there are also inroads that are being made by other actors, especially within the sectors that may not be mainstream or political. Uh, Sarah Birete and uh, Dr. Atia, please, uh, let me just... Welcome back. Of course, uh, Sudil Biaruhanga giving us an update uh, on what's happening in uh, Rwanda. We all now know that the election is done and dusted, especially for the president's position. Paul Kagame, re-elected leader of Rwanda with more than 99 point, well, <laughs> increasingly 9% of the vote. It's both a shocker and a non-shocker. It all depends on the context within which you are looking at it. Here in studio, Sarah Birete, the Executive Director at the Center for Constitutional Governance, is helping us with a perspective on what this particular development means, as well as Dr. Tolit Atia. Let me go to Dr. and we have uh, a few minutes to wind up this uh, discussion, so we're going to have to do more or less a wrap. Rwanda going forward should be able to present a new image, especially within the region with regard to strategic security concerns. Right now, and you earlier spoke about the fact that in Kinshasa, there is unease, discomfort that Paul Kagame has been re-elected. Not that they didn't expect this, but maybe they also had the hope that perhaps a significant number would uh, show up to reduce the percentages for uh, Paul Kagame in a bid to offer them the kind of flesh in uh, saying whatever has been said. But we do know now that uh, relation, the relations between Kinshasa and Kigali are at a very tense point. This particular election result doesn't help matters. For Uganda, well, we were at a point where we needed to simply begin to iron out a few issues here and there. I don't know how exactly this means for us right now. <clears throat> yeah, thanks. And uh, those are interesting uh, dimensions to, 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 to this election that you raised. Mm. You know, I, listening to, to Sarah, I tend to agree with almost all the silent issues mm. she raises. Because Rwanda as a country, or for the people of Rwanda, mm. what was there in this election for them? Um, the cardinal role of politics, in, in any sense of it, is to, to really mobilize its people, mobilize its resources, uh, for the end game that everybody has some sense of security mm. and specifically security of food, security of health, mm. security of energy, security of hope. Mm. What does tomorrow bring? Do you go to tomorrow with some sense of of, of finality, do you, can you predict what is going to happen tomorrow? I think that is what is broken down into a democracy. Do we seem, is there a chance for this in Rwanda? Mm -hmm. I think the answer is yes and no. Yes and no, why? The yes, interestingly, Sarah also pointed out this. Um, the media, portrayal of Rwanda in terms of, uh, you know, economic uh, numerated growth. Mm. But it seems to be very attractive. If you look at the GDP, you look all these comparisons. Mm. Uh, I was looking at uh, between 2017 up to about 2022. 
the performance of uh, Rwanda's investment in, 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 in the international bonds, Rwanda's euro bond, mm. is very attractive. If you look at this from a very economic sense of it, you would want to answer some of the questions I have raised in a very positive tone because you only invest where there are guarantees mm. of security, of still tenure, mm. of, you know. Return. Yeah, so Rwanda gives a very mixed picture. And because of that, I previously said that the high turn up of elections, and particularly that it is the youth who are coming to these Correct. elections without, uh, you know, the baggage, mm. carrying the baggage of the past on them, and probably need a new construction in terms of narrative. Uh, we expected something different. We haven't seen that. We can get to deal without later. Mm -hmm. Now, what does this paint in, in, in the region? Geopolitics or relationships, you know, regional relationships, this Great Lakes region is already a very fragile region. It is, it is, it is an insecure region. It is a difficult region. So whether it is for Uganda to start with, having neighbors who are challenged is not good for us. Mm. Because in trade, for instance, look at it in terms of business. Most of our businesses right now, our big, one of our, some of our biggest GDP earners are our exports, particularly food, okay. and then maybe re-export of, of, of goods and services. Mm. To, the, to, to, to directions of Rwanda, uh, I mean, um, not Rwanda, uh, DRC, mm. and, the, and Southern Sudan. I want to tell you that not much is coming out of DRC, but DRC is in a mayhem. The Eastern Congo, right now as we speak, there are over two million people who have been displaced internally. Internally, yeah. You know? That means people are out of school. That means access to health is a problem. That means life. Access to yes, food. Yes, access to food. Mm. So, shelter. In the long term. So, there's a brewing bigger yes. crisis. So, so in this oh, whole yeah. thing, I can appreciate right now. in this whole thing, mm. how best to look at the outcomes of the Rwanda election is not to discuss the 99%, of course, which is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> in any terms of mathematical extra, <laughs> extrapolation. All right, all right. <laughs> but <laughs> I think it is more serious yes. that we look at the impact mm. of this, both in the near and in the exactly. long term. Exactly. And I can safely predict that it does not augur well for the region. Mm. It simply strains the region further. Why? Because... In, in international relations, it's very, it's very cardinal to understand both the interests of the states and the interests of the leaders as individuals. All right. Doctor, when you say the interest of the state and the interest of the leaders as individuals, you open the pathway to a debate that we cannot end right about now, but one that we can, of course, take on any other day. Sarah, wrap this up. What does this mean for Uganda? Well, I think Uganda and Rwanda relations are now normal. Mm. I hope that they will stay normal because we have had these situations of good and bad relations, closed borders, yet we are more socially interrelated, mm. but also we have a bigger trade That's that right. we can do together. Rwanda also has two positives that, that I want to mention. The cleanest city, but also the highest proportion of women MPs at 61%. I hope that will remain mm. as a woman. But wrapping it up and going forward, we need more meaningful democracy in the region. Stage-managed democracy does not benefit anyone. 
and it's not a question of whether people can eat or sleep both human rights economic social political and civil mm. are important for somebody to enjoy a full life as a human being we need to grant this to our citizens all right we do hope the result there is not a mockery yes. to democracy but something that should be able to ensure that it's actually entrenched within uh, the region that will do it for our kickstarter it's a conversation that will of course continue in the week as the full picture emerges from Rwanda. Our very own Sudil Biaruhanga will be bringing us updates later so you can be rest assured you can catch all the news on NTV at one, NTV Akongezi as well as NTV tonight. For now though that's it. It's been a pleasure having your company here on morning at NTV. I'll be catching you tomorrow. Have a nice day. <laughs>